Welcome to Tutorio. Ever wondered why cement is so hard yet your resolve to go to the gym regularly isn't? Well, we can't help with your gym routine, but we can certainly demystify the hard-hitting world of cement. It's not just the stuff that keeps your house from falling down, it's a fascinating concoction of science, heat, and a whole lot of grinding. Today we're going to delve into the captivating process of how cement is made. So if you want to be as hard as cement, stick around. Now cement isn't your typical cake batter, although it might look like it. Cement is a powdery substance made with calcined lime and clay. It acts as a binder, a substance that sets, hardens, and sticks together other materials. Its primary use? Construction, of course. It's what keeps our buildings, bridges, and roads together. Think of it as the glue in a gingerbread house, only a tad stronger. So next time you see a cement mixer, remember it's not a giant bakery on wheels. Making cement isn't as simple as mixing sugar, butter, and eggs, folks. It's more like whipping up a Michelin star dessert in your kitchen. Now imagine you're the world's best chef, but instead of a kitchen, you're in a quarry, and instead of fresh produce, you've got limestone and clay. These raw materials are your cake ingredients, but before you can start baking, you've got to prep them. You can't just toss whole apples into an apple pie, can you? The same goes for cement. You've got to mine these materials from the earth, which is like picking the perfect apples from an orchard. Then, much like grating carrots for a carrot cake, you've got to crush these materials into a fine powder. And voila, you've got the basic ingredients for your cement. But don't get too excited. We're not ready to pop this into the oven just yet. So we've got our cement ingredients ready, but the oven isn't preheated yet. Now that we've got our raw materials ready, it's time to turn up the heat. Imagine, if you will, a fiery dragon's belly. That's what we liken our kiln to. It's a massive cylindrical furnace where the magic really happens. It's not the kind of oven you'd use for your Sunday roast, though. This beastly contraption can reach temperatures of nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So we feed our raw materials into this dragon's belly, and they undergo a process called calcination. This is just a fancy way of saying that we're cooking them until they change chemically. It's like when you leave a pizza in the oven for too long and it comes out looking like a frisbee. But in this case, we want that transformation. The result? A new substance called clinker. Clinker might sound like the name of a mischievous elf, but it's actually small, hard nodules about the size of marbles. Then it's time for the grand finale. The clinker gets sent to a grinding mill. Now this isn't your run-of-the-mill mill. This one grinds the clinker down into a very fine powder, finer than the sand on a Malibu beach. This powder is what we call cement. It might not look like much now, but when mixed with water, it's the stuff that holds our world together. And voila, we've baked our cement cake, but remember, it's not edible. So, you think you've got the recipe for cement down? Well, let's do a quick recap, shall we? Cement making, as we've discovered, isn't your everyday kitchen recipe. It's more like concocting a magic potion with a dash of humor. First off, we start with a bit of limestone and clay. Think of these as the flour and eggs of our cement recipe. But instead of whisking them together, we toss them into a massive kiln. This is where the magic happens. The heat inside the kiln is so intense it could make a dragon sweat. Now the limestone and the clay do a little dance and transform into something called clinker. Sounds like a character from a fairy tale, doesn't it? But it's actually the heart and soul of our cement. Then the clinker is ground into a fine powder in a process that is somewhat akin to making a smoothie, only less appetizing. To this we add a pinch of gypsum. Why gypsum, you ask? Well, it's like adding salt to a dish. It brings out the flavors, or in this case, it helps control the setting time of the cement. And voila, we've got our cement. No oven, no baking, just a bunch of rocks and some heat. But remember, this isn't a cupcake mix. It's a concoction of hard work, patience, and a little bit of magic. And there you have it, folks. The secret recipe to making cement. Now don't go trying to bake this at home. 